Hello, and thanks for checking out Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. This is episode 166. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite martial arts movie of all time, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. If you're new to the show, or maybe you don't recognize my voice from past episodes, my name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here on the show. I'm also the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. It's because of Whistlekick that I get to do this show and you get to listen to it. If you're unfamiliar with the products we make at Whistlekick, like sparring gear and apparel and some other great stuff, check us out at whistlekick.com. If you want to check out the show notes, and we've got some pretty cool photos from the movie for you over there, some behind the scenes kind of stuff, you can check that out at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We put together show notes for every single episode, and some of you check those out, and you can see all the great stuff that we put together there. If you haven't looked at the show notes before, I'd encourage you to do so. It's a great way to add some context to the things that we talk about over the air. Hopefully you subscribe to the show. Maybe somebody shared this with you. And if they did, please check us out online. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You know, we release the episodes on YouTube. We really try to be everywhere we can that makes it easy for you to listen to what we do. We put this show out two times every week. On Mondays, we do an interview episode. And on Thursday, we do something topic-driven. Or lately, we've done a couple roundtable discussions. I remember the first time I saw Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It was in the theater. A friend of mine who had seen it urged me to go check it out, and I brought my my girlfriend, and she was not a martial artist. She didn't like martial arts movies, but I remember the two of us sitting there just completely engrossed by the magic of this movie. I've always disliked subtitles, but somehow in this film, they don't bother me. There are times I don't even watch them. Not because I only care about the action, which is something you hear a lot of martial artists say about a lot of kung fu films, that they ignore the subtitles because they're really just checking out the fight scenes. That's not what it is for me, at least in this movie. I was just blown away by the acting, the suspense. Really, this is the whole picture. And it's a great movie to get people that aren't in the martial arts movies into them because there's so much more storyline than we're used to seeing in a lot of those films. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was released in 2000, hit wide box office release in 2001, and it was under the original name, the Chinese name, Wohu Kang Long, directed, of course, by Ang Lee. And this was really the film that put Ang Lee on the map in the West. He went on to direct Life of Pi and Brokeback Mountain, and he's also the director from Sense and Sensibility, for those of you that have seen that movie. Of course, it does star Chow Yun-Fat, and this is his first martial arts film. And that's really where he made the name for himself and became sort of a martial arts film actor. He went on to Bulletproof Monk, and of course, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. He's in that as sort of the stereotypical martial artist. And just as an aside, I really wished his role had been bigger. (laughs) I like that movie, but I wanted more Chow Yun-Fat. Michelle Yeoh. You've heard about Michelle Yeoh. She's been somebody that we've talked about on this show. Episode 133 is devoted to talking about her. She's had a long and illustrious career as one of the actors in Tomorrow Never Dies, that James Bond movie. And she was a voice for Kung Fu Panda 2. And now she's filming for a new Star Trek series called Discovery. You know, for a year before this movie, before Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Michelle Yeoh didn't work. She took all that time off to work on her Mandarin and to work on the choreography, not really the choreography, but getting ready in terms of the physical aspects of this movie. Because really, when you think about it, this movie is dramatically physical, as most martial arts films were. Well, Michelle Yeoh threw herself into it and spent an entire year, no other acting, which is pretty impressive. Zi Zhang the youngest of the four stars. She hasn't really broken into the U.S. market yet. She did do Memoirs of a Geisha. She was in Hero in Rush Hour 2. But not big roles and and not somebody that's really spoken of, despite her incredible abilities. She doesn't, or at least didn't, at the time of the filming, have any martial arts experience, but was really deep with her dance background. And that's really how she practiced and acted out the fight scenes. And I think that there's a special quality because of that. If you watch her fight scenes, you can see that there's a lot of fluidity 
with the, what she's doing. And that's, of course, typical of the style of martial arts that they're all doing. But there's something in the way that Zi Zhang does her character justice. And I'd like to think that it's because of her dance background. Michelle Yeoh wasn't the only one to really dive headfirst into the role. Zi Zhang spent months, literally months, practicing calligraphy. And if you recall the movie, there are some scenes where she's doing calligraphy. Months translated out into minutes. That is dedication as an actor. With a modest $17 million budget, the film did $128 million in the United States and $214 million worldwide. Yes, it was a surprise even to the people behind the movie. It's the top grossing foreign film of all time in the United States, and it's the sixth best grossing martial arts film of all time. The four main characters all sort of spoke Mandarin, but they did it with different accents. Some of the Chinese-speaking markets that the movie was released into did not respond well to this. And in those places, the movie was actually dubbed over. Chow Yun-Fat claims he did 28 takes of the first scene on the very first day of shooting because his Mandarin was so bad. In fact, he referred to it as awful. Michelle Yeoh had the script presented to her phonetically from the Mandarin-speaking crew members. Of course, doesn't look like that hurt anything. <laughs> Director Ang Lee personally edited the, the subtitles because the film was really intended for a Western audience even though it wasn't in English. He knew how important those subtitles were going to be for the success of the movie. Did you know that almost every single stunt in the film was done by the actual actors? Most of the places that they use CGI, they did it to remove the wires of the harnesses. It was something that was really important to the whole crew that they be the ones, the actors be the ones doing the stunts. There's some authenticity there. And if you look closely in some of those dramatic fight scenes, you can see that the faces are shown, whereas in a lot of movies during those fight scenes, they do some kind of tricky camera angles, so you can't quite see. Jet Li was originally cast to be Lee Mu Bai over Chow Yun Fat, but he turned it down so he could appear in Romeo Must Die. When it comes to awards, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon won a ton and was nominated for a lot of others, and not just smaller nominations like a lot of martial arts films. In fact, it is the only martial arts film to be nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. It holds the record for the most foreign film Oscars with 10. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Song, Best Writing, Best Editing, Best Costume Design, and more. In fact, more than 100 critics nominated it as their pick for Best Picture. Not just Best Foreign Film Picture, but Best Picture overall. Globally, the list of awards is just too long to even go into. It won literally dozens of them. Everything from Best Picture to Best Director, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actress. If there's a category, it won from some nominating organization somewhere in the world. It's just utterly incredible. The movie is actually adapted from a book series, The Crane Iron Pentalogy. Specifically, it's the fourth book. And in the books, Li Mubai and Yu Shu Lin, the main characters of the movie, really aren't main characters in the book. They're kind of these secondary characters that come into play towards the end of the series. When we think of Chow Yun-Fat in the movie, we think of a few things. We, you know, his, his great fight scenes and his sword work, and of course, his very bald head. Now, he refused to shave his head initially and was so adamant against it that they had to present him with a computer mock-up of what his head would look like without hair. And once he saw it and said, hey, that'll work, he agreed, went ahead, shaved his head. The fight choreographer, Wu Ping Yin, also did the fight scenes for quite a few movies that you'll know. In fact, I'm just taking a small section of them here. The Matrix Trilogy, Ip Man 3, Forbidden Kingdom, Kung Fu Hustle, Kill Bill 2, and the list just goes on and on. If you don't know Wu Ping Yin, I bet if you take a look at the movies that he's done fight choreography for, you're going to see some common threads, not just the quality of the action scenes, but some of the dynamic elements, some of the creativity in them. During one of those fight scenes, Michelle Yeoh tore her ACL and had to be flown to the US for surgery. It took some time to heal. Of course, anybody that knows ACL tears, they take quite a bit of time to heal. During that time, she, of course, wasn't doing fight scenes, but they were bringing her back on set to do some of the non-combat related scenes. Once she got healed up, 
she was right back into the mix of it. The film was made in Beijing, and there was a lot of shooting in China and various provinces. The first portion of the shooting was done in the Gobi Desert, where it, ironically, rained constantly. Director Ang Lee noted that, quote, I didn't take one break in eight months, not even for half a day. I was miserable. I just didn't have the extra energy to be happy. Near the end, I could hardly breathe. I thought I was about to have a stroke. Anyone that's ever had to hold to a timetable or maybe build a home despite weather, you know how challenging that can be. And I don't envy Ang Lee in that position at all. Of course, there's a sequel, Spear of Destiny. It was released primarily on Netflix, so it did hit some theaters. Hopefully you've seen it. We've talked about it on this show. I've encouraged people to check it out. It was directed by Yuan Wu Ping, the fight choreography. He took over for the whole movie this time. And it was based on the fifth book, the last one in that Crane Iron pentalogy. It stars, of course, Donnie Yen and Michelle Yeoh. Zhang Ziyi was offered her role back, you know, to play Jen, but she refused, saying that if Ang Lee wasn't directing, she wasn't acting. When was the last time you watched Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon? I'd like to encourage you to go back, check it out, think of some of these things that I mentioned to you today, and recognize just how powerful a film this is, and really how incredible of a martial arts accomplishment this is. When people talk about martial arts movies and martial arts circles, sure, we have a lot of favorites. We kick them around. People know these movies. But if you talk to your non-martial arts friends, I'll bet more of them have seen Crouching Tiger than any other martial arts movie. And of those people that have seen it, I'll almost guarantee that they like it. Anybody that doesn't like this movie probably shouldn't be your friend anyway. (laughs) I want to thank you for listening today. Thanks for checking us out. Episode 166 on Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. If you know somebody that loves this movie, go ahead, share it out with them. If you want to check out the show notes with the pictures and some other things that I mentioned, you can hit up whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you want to check out the products we make at Whistlekick, that's whistlekick.com. I'll be back soon with another episode. Until next time, train hard, smile, have a great day.